going to get worse. The rainforest may be the lungs of the world, but our global lung capacity is shrinking every hour of every day. As the trees disappear every year, the CO2 gets worse. The temperatures increase. The fires around the world get bigger. So, John, it all sounds horrendous. Apocalyptic, even. Is anything being done about all of this? What even can be done at this point? You said apocalyptic? I am told that it's not an inaccurate word for the road we're on. As we look at these images on the screen, you ask what can be done. But what about... Awareness is always the initial key, and then, one would hope, the willingness to do something about it, to change our behaviors. Perhaps start by just having them take a look at these images on the screen. If each of us can make others aware that it affects them in real ways already, that it isn't just something happening half a world away, they just get them to look outside themselves and their own local life, pay some attention. Hello, how are you? I'm great, I'm great, thank you. So nice to hear from you. Oh yeah, but yes, I've been doing garden. I've been, you know, just taking some days and taking care of everything. How about you? <laughs> oh, so nice to hear from you. When are you come to visit me? Great. I've been working with some such. It's really so much to go on. I love it. How about you? down of trees for lumber, housing, furniture, paper, and its other uses is a perfectly sustainable model when accompanied by strategic and planned replanting. However, even there, there are problems. Increased development in forested areas is the one major cause we can address, and yet we are not doing so. It is a major factor in the net loss of more than 36 million trees annually, and that's just in the U.S., you laugh, but science has already proven that trees communicate with each other. Trees talk? Oh, come on now. Not as you mean it, but they do communicate across entire forests, maybe entire continents, sharing information about drought, and danger, and... So you're saying that a tree or a forest mistreated in one part of the world could affect another forest elsewhere? Yes! Even an individual tree could react badly. Awesome. Sounds like they could use a hug. So now we should all give up using wood. Plastic for everything. Is that it? Good lord, Barbara, that's not what anyone is saying that we can't use wood. We've always used wood, and for the most part, we've been pretty responsible about it. Wood rust.
Well, welcome back. We've been talking with our guest, Mr. Michael Shepard. The doctor. Excuse me? It's Dr. Shepard, as I said earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's Dr. Shepard. Dr. Shepard. So how many operations have you performed, Dr. Shepard? Uh, as I believe your producers have informed you more than once, I am a doctor of environmental science. Oh, well, that's a brand new made-up term, isn't it? Well, no. Uh, the title, perhaps, is new, but the work uh, most certainly is not. Oh, I see. Well, forgive me, doctor. Forgiven. You know, it's been five years since this much ballyhooed celebrated uh, Earth Day. You know, lots of people marching, sitting on the grass. And what do you think has really happened? I mean, has, has anything that was wrong, you know, whatever it was, has that been solved yet? Well, solved. Things don't really happen that quickly, if, if only they did, but awareness-wise, it was very much a step in the right direction. So thank God those dropouts were there and smoking out on the grass. I don't think I would accept your characterization of the attendees. Have you not heard the new term global warming? CO2 levels are rising. The Earth is crying out for help. We are on a path to destroying it. Oh, that's so alarmist. Everything is about the Earth getting destroyed. Well, if you don't know any of the facts, which you clearly don't, why would you doubt it? So you don't believe that the Earth is strong enough to take care of itself. You know, it's been around a while. Well, yes, it has. But we only recently started poisoning it. Why would you want to keep damaging the Earth, the only one we have, if you didn't have to? But a lot of companies are telling me that what people like you really want is to change our entire way of life. That's what you expect. I mean, they say that the issue is not one of the destruction of the planet, but the destruction of our economy. I mean, what do you say to that? Well, I say that's a self-serving and short-sighted opinion. Oh, of course you do. So when the Earth cries out to you, I mean, what type of voice does it have? I mean, it, it's Mother Earth. Shouldn't it have like a feminine voice, kind of naggy? I mean, sorry ladies, sorry ladies. Or, or is it a booming voice from the heavens, yet from the ground? Look at these images on the screen and the graph below it. This is actual data. You can deny it, you can laugh about it all you want, but it's real and it's happening. Well, I'm sure you believe that, doctor. Yes, trees do give us... Oh, 
Hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. My name is Lewis Collins, and this is my top man, Manuel. How can I help you, Mr. Collins? I'm afraid I've been trying to do all my garden by myself. And a fine job you seem to be doing of that, ma'am. It's not that at all. We just noticed that you had a tree in some trouble. Trouble? Yes, ma'am. Seems to be dying. What we'd like to do is cut off some of the main branches for you. Cut off? There's no risk of them breaking out from the next storm, but they're very close to your house. Huh. I can offer you a very reasonable price. You will do nothing of the kind. How dare you to come to my door and casually talk of hacking my tree to pieces? It might mean nothing to you, Mr. Collins. That tree, that tree, it was here long before the three of us were born. And it will be here long after we're gone. <laughs> you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We're so sorry to have bothered you today. <laughs> you have a good day, Mr. Collins. Perhaps we met before <laughs> in another life, you and me. Maybe I was the tree and you were the person, maybe. <laughs> You've always been part of my life. You taught me to stand tall and strong and never give up and be true to my roots. <laughs> Just like you are. And now, I must find a way to help you. What is the point of your position if you cannot do anything about it? last 200 years after man got seriously busy. Think of that. It's just insane acceleration. It's not a great outlook, is it? Why did we get here? It's depressively simple. Modern man's self-centered version of the world in which everything is separate from everything else is nonsense and immensely self-destructive. Indigenous people have known this forever, that all life is connected. Supposedly sophisticated, civilized man? Not so much, since in his worldview, everything is subjugated to him. My name is Antonia. I am 10 years old. Before I talk about myself, I have to talk about trees. Someone has to. <laughs> they can't scream their pain or their happiness in our tongue. <laughs> so they rely on us to speak their truth. <laughs> if more of us not only heard the whispers of the leaves of a tree, but truly listen to the sound. Oh, what a different place we might find ourselves today. <laughs> and the fear, of course, is that this is only going to get worse. The rainforest may be the lungs of the world, but our global lung capacity is shrinking right. every hour of every day. As the trees disappear and their other year, uses the has always been worse. a perfectly the sustainable model when accompanied by strategic and, and land replanting. So it even helps for us grow healthier. But even the there, there are now problems. Increased development in forested areas is the easiest major cause we can address, yet we don't. It is a major factor in the net loss of more than 36 million trees a year in the U.S.
Trees that fall to the ground All our lives nature shows Pains of change No more green, just gray